Uh, today we're here in the uh, Dagger Tools Metal Shaping Classroom and uh, we're going to talk about hardwood slappers and their use. As you can see here on our table we have uh, quite a selection of various slappers, um, current day slappers and some from yesteryear, um, even some custom made slappers at, at the same time. Generally speaking the slappers come in various blade, blade styles and uh, generally are made in, uh, in a hard maple um, for the, the main reason that the, the maple is a very dense wood and it doesn't crack or splinter like you would in uh, uh, oaks and some of the other uh, uh, relative type of wood structures. So we tend to stay with the hard maple and have for years and years and years. Wood slapper obviously has been created uh, and used for centuries in various forms. Um, a lot of times it's uh, probably the most misunderstood tool in the, the metal shaping fabrication side of the market and uh, has, has for a long time a lot of people I think just misunderstand what the use is and how to use them. In a sense they're really no different than a standard mallet um, or shaping or raising mallet. It's just they just happen to be a different configuration but yet the face of the mallet or the slapper is very much the same as a mallet. Um, just a different shape and uh, different configuration. <clears throat> As we see here on the table, the, the three most or four most commonly found sh slappers in today's market are a uh, flat face slapper, one with a medium crown or a low crown, one with a high crown, and a full radius type slapper. And um, those are the most common and then uh, we have kind of transgressed over for the years um, to weighted slappers that have additional weight um, installed in the slapper, in this particular case another half pound. So giving the slapper a little bit more versatility, particularly on the thicker gauge metals and in some cases even on the thin gauge metals, it's more effective uh, in being able to turn an edge or turn a surface at the same time. And you can even see from yesteryear uh, how the slappers had at, at times have grown into very large entities. Um, large faces. Uh, again, some of it's a weight ratio um, versus not. And then we go into things like uh, slap sticks. Uh, these are molded type lightweight slappers for doing uh, fine detail work on edges and forms uh, where obviously the bigger blade slappers don't have the flexibility to access that part of the zone. And then in recent years we've gotten into what we call a reverse curve or a reverse uh, type of slapper where now we can come inside a shape and, uh, and draw a shape up and we'll try to show a little bit of a demonstration of that here going forward. So, but by and large typically the, the slapper is an entity that allows us to take a sheet of metal uh, and stretch it by adding shape um, into a camber or a form. In, uh, in many cases prior to the average individual having access to a uh, wheeling style machine, um, the slapper was his best option when it came to either uh, building a, a door skin that uh, had to have a relative amount of camber put into it or shape. Um, he could use the slapper in conjunction with a shot bag and he could uh, raise the metal and put shape into it uh, virtually blemish free and that is one of the other attributes of having a slapper is obviously the leather face facing on it or the facing on it allows you to to minimize the amount of stretch uh, or the amount of surface damage relative and, and obviously control how much stretch goes into the part uh, creating a form. Much different than in the sense if we use a a mallet um, versus the blade of the slapper, the mallet obviously we have the situation where the edges and that can leave marks and, and dents in the surface that would take more time to, uh, to work our way out than uh, obviously the blade of the slapper. A uh, flat blade of the slapper is going to allow the metal to flow linearly, um, stretch linearly to add camber. We'll show that here in a second. By adding a little bit more shape to the blade then we also not only do we shape it and add shape this way linearly but we're also adding a three-dimensional kind of effect where we can begin to put shape in in this direction in the panel and by increasing that we can do that uh, at, a, at a much higher rate. 
Uh, additionally, we'll talk about where we can take the slapper as a secondary tool and use it for all of our edge shaping uh, uh, relative to forms and using with dollies in conjunction with or adding additional shape to the edge. The uh, full radius slapper being a little bit different, uh, really one dimensional, only going to raise the, the metal really aggressively, put a lot of camber in it very quickly uh, because the blade does have some curvature in uh, the opposite direction, it, it does allow some, some three-dimensional shape raising at the same time, but it is very rapid uh, raising of the metal. So, and then like I said earlier, the, the, the weighted ones uh, allow us to put a little bit more weight into the surface and obviously it allow us to move the metal a little bit more rapidly. So, <clears throat> we're gonna demonstrate here a little bit by just taking a traditionally flat sheet of low carbon steel as you can see and uh, in conjunction with the shot bag on this particular case a standard 12 inch shot bag um, this one has uh, particularly has uh, lead shot in it but uh, could be sand filled doesn't really matter um, let the steel shot might be a little bit more aggressive as far as speed uh, but in most cases you're not going to notice that um, and obviously we have to have the shot bag to allow the metal to flow underneath it so um, it, it allows that shape to be introduced. So in this case here we're just going to take a uh, standard flat slapper again versus the high crown. We're going to take the flat slapper to start with and we're just going to start to work the surface on the bag and again we're just going to use a, a general pattern, overlapping pattern Primarily by how frequently and how uniform the blow surface is, is what's going to give us the amount of shape that we're going to introduce into the panel. So we can be, should be able to see even um, at this point some small changes going on in the panel. At this point we can start to see how we've introduced some shape in there very subtly. <clears throat> And again, by becoming more aggressive on the surface, by increasing the blow force and or the frequency of the blows, we can begin to see how much more of that shape has been introduced from our original flat panel. So that's the essence of where the slapper becomes very valuable. And it, we work the surface more effectively. And we see we can put pretty quickly a relative amount of shape in there and introduce a relative amount of form. So at the same time though, with, because we're using the flat slapper, there's virtually no shape in this direction. The shape is all linearly based on how we introduced our force of the slapper face to the surface. So if we start to uh, jump over and take a <clears throat> higher crown slapper, we should begin to see where we should begin to introduce not only shape this way, but shape this way. So we'll go with a high crown and introduce some additional shape. In this case here we may work with a little bit more force in the central zone of the panel and uh, feather it out to the edges to get the more desired effect. And so again we can see how much additional shape here and we should begin to start to see some slight changes now in the surface in this direction. So again, by repeating that surface continuously for a period of time, we can add that shape or camber, uh, not only two-dimensionally, but in some cases three-dimensionally by using the slapper. And if we go to a full radius slapper, we'll really see the difference of how quickly the surface will raise underneath it pretty darn rapidly.
so we can begin to see yeah how much how much shape we've introduced into that panel and we can begin to see now how much more shape is going in this direction so the uh, the essence of the slapper is obviously its first dimension is that ability to add shape to a panel add camber and do it virtually blemish free opposed to the use of a hammer where obviously we'd have the raising situation of the mallet and or the uh, uh, aggressiveness of the mallet in some cases it may not be as desirable. So we can begin to see with the mallet, though we can rapidly bring the surface up, uh, raise it, but we get uh, again blemishes that we can't see as easily uh, or can't work as easily uh, versus the slapper in that case there. So <clears throat> as we uh, transgress over the other side of the slapper as I mentioned earlier that's uh, got great value is that it's a great edge shaping tool more so than the mallet because obviously if we go to a forming head and attempt to use the forming head uh, and introduce the shape into our part from uh, some kind of a forming device could be a head it could be a t-dolly could be a handle dolly any one of those are a combination of and uh, it's much much harder to, to, to create that shape with the mallet versus just the conventional slapper and any one of the blades flat medium or high crown is very effective in doing that edge shaping so what we're doing is adding the shape and the uniformity of it with the slapper blade Or in some cases, if it was on a dolly or a form head, we could introduce that shape with a T dolly or be a T dolly. And again, different than, than our conventional type mallet in this case. Doesn't mean we couldn't use the mallet, but the mallet's not going to give us this, this blemish free or virtually blemish free surface that we're going to get from the slapper. <clears throat> then in the secondary cases, in recent cases, and yeah, you could go in and yeah, you could create camber, create reverses uh, by stretching both sides of the surface simultaneously, this side, this side, and obviously it gives us that reverse curve or the ability to put a reverse in. Slapper is very helpful. And in the case of uh, the new generation tool, tools we've begun to use these these uh, reverse curve or offset slappers. <clears throat> to begin to introduce shape where we have to roll a surface over as an, an option to raising it with as much blemish as the mallet would be. So in this case here we do the same similar kind of thing but because the the slapper blade is in this case offset to the main blade it allows us to reach into a surface where obviously the, the flat blade slapper is restrictive in that case. We can begin to rake or pull that surface out. And we can begin to see how easily and quickly we can begin to turn or radius surface by stretching that edge, that edge over with the minimal amount of damage to the surface that we would normally see. So the reverse lapper. Um, as a generational tool has uh, got some merits as far as an option in the shop as far as a certain types of applications. And again, same case, we get virtually a, birch, a blemish free type of surface out of it. So again, we can see how quickly we can put that shape into our surface, stretch that outer edge and introduce and we can do that with a very uh, reasonable amount of control at the same time.